Welcome to Infocast number one for the Secure Southwest Conference. The focus for this Infocast is the successful compromise of UK government websites. Websites can contain vulnerabilities which allow unauthorised people the ability to change the content of the web page often displaying a message indicating that the website has been compromised. The message that is displayed can be varied, from the political to a simple boast that the site has been compromised. A variety of different attackers exists, from organised groups to hobbyists acting alone. In many cases they will boast about their success in public forums, leaving a permanent record of the successful attack. UK public sector organisations have been increasing their web presence over the last decade. Many are allocated a .gov.uk domain to indicate that they are an official public sector organisation. Like all websites, these can contain vulnerabilities, and the following is an analysis of attacks since 2004. Not all attacks will be listed, only the attacks that are publicly documented and displayed on archive sites of such attacks. Many more successful attacks will remain anonymous, as the compromise is used for more sinister purposes, such as delivering malware to every visitor of that page, or in some cases, as an attack vector into the underlying infrastructure. The following details have all been taken from an attack archive called Zone H which lists attacks since 2004 and provides a searchable archive of all the attacks it contains in its database. The archive database can have filters applied and in this case the archive was filtered to display only .gov.uk domains. This is a screenshot of the Zone H website. The figures for successful .gov.uk attacks are interesting. Six hundred and eighteen .gov.uk addresses have been compromised since two thousand and four, which is an average of nearly sixty two per year. Further analysis can categorise the attacks according to the organisation type that has been compromised. There are several different types of UK public sector organisations and the following few minutes analyses them in more detail. National websites are those provided by national departments such as the Foreign Office or the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. The figures show a steady amount of successful attacks over the period. Apart from a peak of 14 in 2005, the average is between 4 and 5 per year. Regional websites include those produced by the Welsh Assembly and the Scottish Parliament, along with other regional bodies such as fishery agencies. Compromises of these have been low, however the peak occurs in 2013. Further investigation would be useful to determine if this is due to a rapid growth in regional websites or a lowering of standards. The addition of emergency services such as fire and ambulance, however discounting the police services which use a different domain, shows a more erratic pattern of attacks, with the peak appearing in 2012. The addition of the lowest tier of public sector websites distorts the picture further. Parish councils, which tend to cover more rural areas, have a much higher level of successful attacks than all of the rest. Town Council websites added into the graph shows an even higher level of successful attack, with Town Councils having the worst figures in every year apart from three.
The final set of figures to be added in are the local authorities, which are analysed in more detail later. Local authorities have been steadily improving since 2007, when successful attacks were at a high. Analyzing the figures as a whole, it shows that town and parish councils are the highest risk. These sit on the lowest tier of UK public sector, providing identical services to each other, services such as allotments, car parks, cemeteries, parks and street furniture. The main difference between town and parish councils is that a town usually represents a smaller regional area and has a mayor. One of the reasons they will be more vulnerable to attack is that they are more likely to use externally hosted websites developed by amateurs or low-cost developers who lack the technical tools to produce accredited websites. Looking again at the total number of compromises since 2004, the figures show the successful attacks are rising, albeit with a slight dip in 2012. There are multiple causes for this. The availability of tools and exploits has increased, with tools such as Metasploit providing a simple method to attack a website with very little skill. In some cases, .gov.uk addresses have become a higher profile target for activists opposed to some of the proposed censoring announced by national government. In terms of local authorities, which are providing many services online now and will store more data about the citizen than any other public sector body, data such as financial information, address and electoral registration details, child protection and health data. Local authorities are split into several types, counties, districts, metropolitan boroughs and unitaries. Of these, the latter two will store the most data as they will provide the most services to a citizen. Counties and districts split the type of services they provide. Over the period, 180 local authorities were compromised, with the smallest, the districts, experiencing the most attacks. The trend shows a steady decline in attacks since the peak of 35 in 2007. However, in 2013, there was a 60% increase on the previous year. There are several types of compromise that occur within these figures, the most common being a simple defacement, which is where the page is changed to display a political message or the logo of the attacker. These are often conducted using automated tools, which will scan for known vulnerabilities to exploit, then use a successful compromise to change the web page content. This is the most publicised type of attack, as the attacker wants to show off what they have done to the world. Politically motivated attacks will focus specifically on their desired targets, looking for vulnerabilities to exploit, which once exploited will allow the attacker to display a specific message that is often politically opposite the message the victim wants to display. One of the most well-known hacktivist groups needs no introduction. Other types of attack that are less likely to be publicised include attacks where the underlying code on the web page is changed to deliver malware to anyone who visits the page. If access can be gained to change the page, then it can also be gained to change the code of the web page. It only requires a single line of code to be changed to change the whole website into a malware delivery node. 
Another type of attack is where vulnerabilities are exploited to gain further control of internal infrastructure. Tools can then be uploaded to the web server which provide full access to that server and possibly allowing further access into the underlying network and in some cases could also be used as a way into connected networks. This is a big risk for the public sector as many networks are being joined up. This type of attack was used to compromise the Sony PlayStation network as a connected network was used to gain access to the valuable data. What can be done to prevent such attacks? Patching the underlying infrastructure with security patches is essential, blocking known vulnerabilities that are put into automatic tools. Verifying the code on websites is essential when it is developed, ensuring that it is developed to recognize standards such as OWASP, combined with an essential independent verification by an accredited security tester can make it harder for an attack to be successful. It is also essential that all components are verified, as third-party tools can introduce vulnerabilities if not developed correctly and could point the website to malicious websites. Knowledge of the origin of external content is essential, as this is outside the sphere of your control, and if the external location is compromised, it, as it does not patch or verify code, then your website will be vulnerable. Security test websites regularly and ensure they are tested after every major change as one simple miscoding can provide a very useful attack vector. Monitor all websites for unauthorized changes and if possible set up alerts for unauthorized access. It only takes one compromised website to lower customer confidence in using the website and in a time when online services are becoming key in meeting budget restrictions, it is essential that customers do not lose faith in your website. Don't be another statistic. In summary, Patch, patch and patch again. Know your website code. Know your partners. Test and monitor websites. This has been an Infocast for Secure Southwest Conference by John Finch.